All right, so in this video here, we're going to be learning about switch statements. And switch statements are very similar to if statements, but with a couple differences. I'm going to show you how they work right now. So let's go ahead and open our co-editor. All right, and for those of you out there that might be a little lost, we are in the localhost. So I would say right here, localhost forward slash demo. All right, that's the folder that we are working on. We are working with these files here, right? This is what's open in my co-editor right now, as you can see right here. All right, so I'm going to grab that blank .php, and I'm going to do a save as with my keyboard. And you can do a save as right here if you want. And I'm going to call this switch statement. Let's call it switch statements statements. There we go. All righty then. Just like, uh, what was this guy? His name? Jim Carrey. Alrighty then. Alright. And if I can remember how to write this, right? What's going on with me today? Hopefully you are better than me writing the PHP tags already. Anyways, so what, how do we use these sta uh, switch statements and why are they so useful? Switch statements are very useful. And let me show you why. If, let's say for example, you have an if statement here, right? And you want to test a condition. You say four less than 10, whatever, right? So you have a four here. Let me just do it as a variable here. And I have, I want to test that number is less than 10, right? And then I'm going to execute something here. I'm going to say echo this. For example, we already did this. I'm just giving you an, a quick example. If I wanted to test number again, I wanted to test this variable again against another condition, I would have to write another if statement here and another if statement here if I wanted to test number against other numbers here. For example, 20 or, you know, 40. There comes times in our program when we want to change, we want to test one condition against multiple values, right? And that's where switch statements would save us a lot of time. And I'll show you right now the syntax of it. So let's say I have the same variable number and I have it right here. And let's create a switch statement. So switch statements, we write them like this. Switch, keyword switch, parentheses, and the curly brackets. There we go. Now with switch statements, we don't use anything related to ifs. We use something called case. So we write a case, and the case could be anything we want. In this case, it's going to be a number, 34. And then we put not a semicolon, but a colon. There's two dots right here. And then we, ex we put the code that we want to execute on the bottom. All right, for example. And then all we have to do is keep writing these cases. If we want to test it against another condition, you see that? So we could say 37 here. We could test it again. This, if you don't understand, don't worry, I will explain it again right now. Okay. So we have these cases here, but we need to grab, we need to put something right here because we need to test this value, this value is against something, right? So we put the number right there and we test one single value. This is the if statement, right? It tests one single condition, one single condition, I'm sorry, against multiple values. So right now, this number is being tested against this case, all right? Is it equal to 34? No, it's not. It's going to go to the next case. If it's equal to 37, then it's going to echo this. But if it's not, it's going to go to the next case, next case, and next case. All right? So I'm just going to say that it's equal to 34. Just for, you know, demonstration purposes only. And let's go ahead to the browser and see how that looks. All right. Oh, so we have a problem here. It printed everything. I wonder why that is. Why did it print everything we, when we already found our our answer right here, 34, right? We don't have anything similar. Why did it print everything out? Well, this is a very important uh, topic right here, a very important thing. 
for cases here, all right, to make sure that this works properly, we need to add another statement here called break. All right, so if we come here, it says it is for, right? Well, it's it. I'm misspelling it here and I need to fix it. It is for 34. All right, but whatever, I'm just not going to even fix it. But as you can see here, if, the, if you want this to work properly, you need to add this break here. What this break is doing is saying, all right, it found what it needed, and then it's going to break out of this. And that says it's done with it. It's not, it doesn't need to look anywhere else. But if you don't put that break, it keeps printing everything underneath. Because it's saying, I, I still haven't found what I want, and I'm just going to keep going. This break here is going to make you break out of that when it finds the answer to that. All right? So make sure that you put your break right there everywhere in this in the bottom of this case. All right? Below the executable code. All right? So for example, let's say I'm going to put this equal to 24. Look what happened, all right? Come back here, it is 24. So it goes all the way it starts with K, the first case here. If it doesn't find, it goes to the next one, and so on and so on until it finds this one, and then it says break. I don't need to go around anymore. I don't need to go anywhere else. This doesn't go around, by the way. It's not a loop, but it will go to the end, and that's it. Now, for this here, we can also write a default, just in case all these cases are not true. They're not, just in case this is not found here anywhere. All right, we can write some a default, and this default could be anything we want. We can just say we couldn't, we couldn't, we could not find anything. All right, and then I don't need really need to write this, but I will just to keep the structure of this. All right, and let's just make this equal to something else, so that way we can have this. We could not find anything. You see that? So this is the default. This is like similar to that else statement. If some, everything here is not met, we can't find this 100 anywhere here on these cases, then we are going to execute the default. All right, so this switch statement here, I want you to take this out of this, this lecture here. Switch statements are great when you're testing one condition against multiple different values. All right, just in case you're testing maybe a form, or you're testing a, a, a entry to a database or something like that, and you're just testing one condition. If this user has not done this, if this user has done this, if this user done this, that, that, you know, why, let's say for you're testing a user and you're testing multiple conditions against that user in a database or a login page or something like that, you will use a if statement. It's a lot better than using, um, well, not a if statement, a switch statement. It's a lot better than using if statements, and it's it's clear. You can see that it's more clear to write. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this lecture, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.